I've been to many sites in my time, but this was actually the first time I visited Waylands. It's some distance from my home in West Wilts, but it was a beautiful day, so I decided to take a drive up onto the Ridgeway and explore this wonderful site. The site was first mentioned in the Saxon Chronicles of 955 and appears to have undergone two distinct phases of development within a relatively short time of each other. Radiocarbon dating has revealed that it was built between 3590 and 3555 BCE. The first phase consisted of a much smaller oval earthen mound covering a stone and wooden mortuary structure. It was excavated in 1919 and again in the early 1960s and the digs revealed the disarticulated remains of 14 people 11 men, 2 women and a single child, some of which displayed signs of fatal injury from arrowheads. A number of the arrowheads were still in situ. There was also a second crouched burial. We'll never know what fate befell those people, be it illness or death through conflict which certainly seemed to be the case in some instances. The digs also revealed numerous fragments of Neolithic pottery, flint axe fragments and some animal bone. Only decades after the initial construction had fallen into disuse, it was enlarged into the impressive funerary monument that we see there today. A chalk and earthen mound was built over the first phase, greatly enlarging its dimensions, and this cruciform chamber containing symmetrical transepts was added to the southern end. And again, the excavations revealed the disarticulated remains of seven adults and one child. The tomb entrance we see now is the result of a reconstruction following the second dig in 1962 and 63. Four uprights now front the tomb, where originally there were six. Laying on the ancient ridgeway, it was also evident from the digs that the site had been occupied throughout history, from the early Neolithic right through to the medieval period. So who was Wayland, or Welland, or Voland, or Volander? His name lies in Norse mythology. He was the god of smithing, a metalsmith of great repute. The legend states that should your horse be unfortunate enough to throw a shoe during your travels and you bring the animal to the smithy, leaving payment in silver coin, when you return the next day your steed will be mysteriously reshod and your money gone, rescued by the spirit of Waylon. And to this day, sometimes visitors leave coins in the stones in tribute to Waylon. They're removed and donated to local charities.